Hi everyone. Um, I just want to make this clip about a game that I play with my kids at school and it's a game that they just can't seem to get enough of. We call it Bother. Um, when I've played it in the past it's been called something else and you'd probably forget what that name would be once you've played a few times and you end up losing really good cards. I'm really surprised that I haven't recorded this in the past. Um, something came up, someone contacted me, I said that I was sending them a link to the game of Bother and I found that I haven't made a clip about it. So it's pretty um, strange that I've made a, or had so much success with the game, but I haven't put it on here where I'd love everyone to use it. So it's basically a game of mental computation, finding out ways to add numbers, uh, easily recalling totals, memorizing what totals could be. And it's a game that my kids in my classroom every morning before school for the last 30 minutes before school starts we sit around tables and we play it and I always give them the option of what game would you like to play and without doubt this is the go-to game they just love it um, you can play it with just two people we have up to five six people playing it um, and all sorts of strategies start to develop so this is one of the most successful games I've ever had with teaching kids um, and with adults too in many many years of teaching it's called bother and i hope you enjoy it as much as we do okay here's how we play bother by far the most successful game i've ever played with my kids at school uh, in this game the ace is worth zero the king is worth one queens and jacks are worth ten the object of the game is to get the lowest score possible keeping the small cards that you can get getting rid of the big ones. So to start off with, this is just two players. This is me and this is my opponent. Um, hard to demonstrate a game when there's only one of you because I'm not meant to know what they have. Upon dealing the four cards, each player looks at their two end cards once only. You can see what that player has got. I won't show you mine. So we're going to turn over. This player wants to get aces, kings and low cards. So what they do is this, to start off with, they go to the centre, to the pile, they look at the first card there, they can either take this and swap it, or get rid of it. They know what's there, they know what's there. They don't know what's there, they, they'd risk it. So for starters, this person, I wouldn't take that because these two are both smaller, so they're just going to leave it there. Over to this player, they have a look at their two cards, once only at the start, they're both rubbish. So, always pick up first. Have a look. Hmm, yep, that's worth keeping. I'm going to swap it for this one. So, it's sending a message that whatever card I picked up, it was less than 10. Back over to this person. First thing you do is pick up. Do I want that card? Hmm, well, I've got to try and remember what I had there and there. I might try this one. I forgot what it was. So once I do it, I'm committed. And, oh, that wasn't a great move, was it? I end up taking a five. Over to this person. Pick up first of all. Always do that first. Whoops, I've got two there. Hmm, that's worth keeping. So I'm going to do this. Yep, that's a good move. Now I'm trying to remember what my two totals are there. Keep in mind, I don't know what's there. Over to this person pick up a seven no I think that's a bit too big I might just put it there this person pick up now here's where we can risk these ones I'm thinking that this card could be worth swapping so I pick up I put it there I still don't know I'm committed I can't change my mind and yes that was a good move so I now know the totals of the three of my cards back over to this person. They know the totals are there. They pick up. Yes, very good card. Good opportunity to do this. I know that's a four, I think it was, but I'm going to risk it. And when we play this with the kids, we say risk it for the biscuit. All right, I'm now committed. I can't change. And yes, that was a good move. Now, we keep playing on and off. Um, and gradually, um, Players can do this. If they think they've got a really low score, this player has just said, yep, I think I've got a low score. They knock. That means they're finished. 
this player and any other players have one last turn. So I'm just counting on the fact that I think I've got a fairly low score or lower than what they might have. If we get to the bottom of the deck, then you can't go any further. Okay, I've knocked. They've all had their last go. Well, this, I'll see if this person has their last go now. Oh yes, a very good card. And they are going to risk it. This is one card they haven't swapped. Oh, let's see what they do. <sighs> that was a very good swap. Let's turn over the cards. And this is where the maths comes into it. What we, When I'm playing with the kids, I'm always asking, oh man, I'm always asking them, okay, we're going to add these numbers up. What are some quick ways to add? And this is a perfect example. And no, it was not rigged. Parts of 10. 8 and 2 make 10. 5 and 5 makes 10. 10 and 10 makes 20. Rather than going counting all going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We looked for quick ways to add numbers and to explain. So that player got a score of... So it's player 1. Player 2, they got a score of 20. This player, which is me, a six and a king. That was that last one I swapped, a four. Okay, what are the easy numbers to add up there? Not always for parts of 10, but easy to add. Um, I'm gonna go six and four makes 10. 10 and four makes 14. A king is worth one fifteen. There we go. And then we divvy the card, put the cards back them there we shuffle that was a really quick shuffle and then we just start again one two three four one two three four put the cards there and often to start the game you can do this whoever goes first has the first choice on that card oh, sorry I should have pointed that out to you before look at your cards once only Ooh, a six and a ten that definitely so if this player was starting they would definitely do this they would say I'll take that and swap put that there this player wouldn't take that they'll have a look first good card they'd take that and they would go and so on players can either choose to take from here or if this player accidentally puts an ace or a king down there this player could take from there as well so you can either pick up from here or take discarded cards sorry I should have pointed that out in the first round um, our next score just gets added on and I don't, we just play for the sake of we just play for the fun and if you want it to be really technical um, one rule I've had is as soon as someone passes 101 whoever's got the lowest score at that time is the winner but you can just you know rules for schools so Get the lowest score you can. You can take cards from here or discarded ones and get the lowest hand possible. And trust me, it's addictive, this game. It's a lot of fun. And it's a game that my kids love the most. And I've got to admit, I love it too. That's bother. Cheers.